So good afternoon. Thank you uh, to ISO Press for the opportunity to present. It's very nice to be here. And I think it's an amazing lineup because I think all these talks you will see by the end of the session are really complementary. So I think there's a lot of added power in this energy. Very nice. Um, my talk today is um, ostensibly about some tooling for what I would call fair data publishing. So that's getting data directly published even before you might even write a research article on it. So after the fact, you could choose to write an article if you would like. Um, getting this data into a fair format is, is an issue, and so we've built some tooling for that. Um, but I don't want to just show you the tool and give you an explanation. Uh, I thought it was much more instructive to actually kind of tell you the story about how we got to this tooling and to this pilot that we will run in the Leiden academic community called the Fair Wizard of Leiden. Because um, I think you'll see that this trend is quite natural and kind of logical and reasonable, maybe even inevitable the way we get there. So I will start the story at the beginning, at least from my point of view. I'm working at the Go Fair Foundation. My job for the last four or five years has been to help a really diverse community of stakeholders to implement the FAIR principles. And so the FAIR principles were, you know, we had some meetings early on in 2014 where a group came together to think about these things, um, actually to, to make data available for AI, the kind that, of, of um, systems that Frank was just talking about. Two years later, this uh, collection of individuals published the paper that enunciated these 15 one-liners. And the basic idea is that we are looking for ways to automate the F, A, I, and R functions. So to remove from the humans the burden of a lot of data munging that would be required to do uh, findability, accessibility, interoperability, and, and to get the data reused. Um, there's another clever characterization of that acronym, and I think this really comes from the Americans were really thinking this way, that FAIR is also a great acronym for data that is fully AI ready. You don't need humans to step in and do data munging. It's just ready to go. Um, the point is, uh, these principles have been a great, as the name suggests, a great guide for people who are trying to implement FAIR. Um, I've color-coded the principles here according to those that might be the domain more of infrastructure providers, so really technical elements. And the blue principles are, are really domain-specific things that have to happen. So not only do we need technical people, but we need practicing research scientists to do some of the work here. Um, long story short, in our attempts to help people implement the principles, we've been able to boil down an approach to this very simple three-point verification framework. We've gotten a lot of mileage out of this and, and go fair in helping groups to, to try implementing. Metadata is really important. Machine actionable metadata is, is some people say 90% of FAIR. So we have all, the first point here is really dedicated to metadata, metadata for machine workshops, where we can help people create their machine actionable metadata. That becomes a part of your overall FAIR implementation profile. So if you think of the FAIR principles, you can consider and state as explicitly as possible your implementation, try what technologies will you use to implement each of these principles? And then together, um, with that, your data will be ready to be broadcasted or, or made available on the internet. And we talk about a fair data point as a generic way of, of doing this. Um, one even further kind of simplification of this, we've now learned that it's very nice to split this activity into a verification phase where you really take your data and you try to make it machine actionable. And then there's the fair orchestration phase where that machine actionable data and metadata is actually put into practice, is actually operations for F, A, I, and R can be done. I'm gonna focus now on the FAIR implementation profile because this is where we derive this tooling for making uh, a, a data publisher, a general purpose data publisher. This is a questionnaire, a very simple questionnaire that is the basis of building your FAIR implementation profile. It's each of the FAIR principles and then a very carefully worded question, you know, how do you want to implement this? What's your technology choice? People could certainly go to a spreadsheet and fill out this, this table, but 
yeah, then you end up with the human readable document. What we wanted was to make fair implementation profiles themselves fair data. We wanted to make FIPS machine actionable. To do this, we went to a very clever tool called the Data Stewardship Wizard, which is essentially a, a tool that can allow you to design even very complicated forms online, asking the user questions. But as they answer those questions, the tool records the answers in a machine actionable way. So you can create a machine actionable data management plan, for example. We commandeered the data stewardship wizard and retrofitted it not with a questionnaire for data management, but with a FIP questionnaire. And we also added on a capability to read and to produce um, a data format called nano publications. And you're going to hear a lot about that from the master of nano publications, Tobias, um, after the break. But the, FIP, the resulting FIP wizard is essentially an environment where you can create, author nano publications, you can consume them, work with them, all for the purpose of your fair implementation profile. And I'm going to highlight uh, or you know, acknowledge the, the work of Envy Fair here, who have been big help, uh, big help in, in small projects, helping to develop this tool. Uh, so they can build FIPS for their, their research community. This is what the tool looks like. Um, it's a questionnaire. And you can see that there's a bunch of questions that are divided into chapters, F, A, I, and R. There's also this chapter seven, which is a, um, a chapter where you can go and author nano publications. But you can see there's a question, you know, what is the, um, uh, uh, the globally unique persistent identifier that you're going to use? In the drop-down list, there are a list of potential identifier resolution services that you might opt to use to create FAIR data. They're all listed as nano publications, so you can simply select the nano publication you want and continue on. If you don't see the, the, the resource that you're looking for, then you go to chapter seven and you author a new nano publication for the resource that you have in mind. That will automatically appear in the drop down menu and then you and others uh, can use that nano publication to record your FAIR implementation profile. Um, yeah. Being FAIR data, uh, you can do all kinds of wonderful data science right out of the gate with the FAIR implementation profiles. So this is RDF, so you can draw beautiful graphs. You can do all kinds of interesting analytics. Um, here you're looking at comparisons of FAIR implementation profiles from different communities. And so you can begin to see where there's overlaps, where there's uh, gaps, how you might revise your FAIR implementation profile to have increased interoperability, et cetera. Um, it would be great to talk to Howden about making uh, some beautiful and more dynamic representations of, of this kind of data. What we realized in this exercise, so, so we accomplished our goal. People were making fair implementation profiles, and they were machine actionable. But the more we started working with nano publications, the more we could begin to see some very interesting properties that we kind of anticipated them, we knew them, but, but we didn't really have a, a feeling for how they worked until we started really going down this line. I'll give you two examples. With the nano publication output from the FIP wizard, we could, um, with a, another organization like Fair Sharing, which records these kinds of information, so the, the kind of resources or standards that organizations want to use, um, we could now exchange information between these two platforms with a very generic API that just reads and writes nano publications. There is no need for a sophisticated or specialized API connection and agreements between us. It was simply, oh, can you read nano publications? Great, here's a bunch of nanopubs. You can interpret them and work with them. So we have this very common minimal data standard that could be an exchange between different organizations. The second example is composition, that we have these atomic level nano publications for FAIR enabling resources. When they are arranged into a list, we would call that a FAIR implementation profile. That list can also be represented as a nano publication, as an index nano publication. So it's an example of where one type of, uh, or one uh, uh, level of nano publication can be used to compose a higher level nano publication. So 
we're starting to get closer to what we would call fair digital objects in this case. Um, and Byron uh, will be able to give you much more insight into the status of discussions around, the international discussions around fair digital objects. But we now think that nanopublications are very good examples of this kind of data publishing. And then this is my, essentially my, my last slide. This is um, uh, where all of this work has led to conceptually for us. This is the three-point verification framework, but now redrawn in the shape of an hourglass. We're borrowing that from the hourglass architecture of the internet itself, where the shape is meant to represent your freedom to operate. So at the top and the bottom, users are free to do whatever they would like. The way you go from you know, data generation at the top into the center of the hourglass is your verification step. And you could choose a common minimal data framework for the center of the hourglass, like nano publications or something more general like FDOs. But once you're there and people are publishing consistently in those minimal standards, you now open up the opportunity for large scale data orchestration or fair orchestration on that data. So you can have fair data points that, uh, fair data points that begin to expose the data and additional layers that can do more um, sophisticated things like authors, um, authentication and authorization, access control, uh, um, semantic disambiguation and mappings, et cetera. So we see this now that because we have a tool that allows us to generate nanopublications um, for FIPS, we thought, well, we're one step away from allowing you know, anyone to use this tool to create essentially questionnaires to publish nanopublication templates for any kind of data. And if a scientist could think about representing their data in some kind of assertional format, like nanopublications, then they could more and more routinely author and publish nanopublications and make them available for orchestration under their own well-defined conditions. And then lastly, I just want to say this is a um, uh, the FDO and wizard team that are working together on, on the wizard and on this hourglass architecture. Um, but we also have, um, uh, I have colleagues uh, in, in Leiden, local data stewards there, who are now going to look for um, a handful of researchers throughout the Leiden academic community who would be willing to test pilot the wizard and then as a nano publication tool for real world and hopefully more and more routine nano publication publication. Um, and we are inflicting upon ourselves a, um, a pretty strict time frame. The FAIR digital object forum will come to Leiden in October for their first international symposium on FAIR digital objects, where they will hope to secure and to announce um, a very broad critical mass stakeholder endorsement of FDOs um, as a way forward. We would like the FAIR Wizard of Leiden to feature as a, as a nice example for the FDO forum when they arrive. And with that, I would like to say thank you very much for your attention. And if I can, farewell. Thank you.